acquaint you all with a little milieu and handful attainments of Sri Chaitanya's conscientious and indefatigable family. Years ago, when giving birth to a girl child was considered a burden and educating a girl child was absurd. Our very own co-founder, Dr. Jansi Lakshmi Bhai, have not only lived through such challenges, but also fought against them elegantly. Her two daughters, Miss Sushma and Miss Seema, are the epitome of their mother. To continue the legacy of Dr. B.S. Rao sir and Dr. Jansi ma'am, their children played a huge role. Miss Sushma academically leading all the colleges, and Miss Seema directing all the schools. Most of the schools are struggling with the online education and the teachers are facing a lot of criticism. Sri Chaitanya was not only swift enough to understand these crises but also overcame these challenges in a blink. Miss Seema goes candid about work-life balance, making the online education a great success in spite of many challenges. We have Master Durgesh and Miss Sanyukta from grades 4 and 5 to sound out with our director. So praise yourself and without further delay, let's welcome our charismatic and captivating guests. Uh, good morning, madam. Good morning, It's Adi. a pleasure to meet you, ma'am. Uh, thanks to be he being here, taking your time for Tamil Nadu group, Tamil Nadu schools. Here I want to say uh, one thing, madam. Uh, under the leadership of management, within the span of five years, especially Tamil Nadu, we are reaching to 40,000 students, ma'am. Uh, it is a proud moment. And uh, especially in this uh, pandemic situation, I can uh, proudly and confidently say that what we are in the service towards the society, the parents or students. Really extraordinary uh, result is coming to extraordinary results, madam. Obviously, we are very proud of uh, Tamil Nadu's achievements, whether it be academics or uh, strength or the feedback. So congratulations to the team and good luck going forward. Thank you, ma'am. Considering your busy schedule, I would like to move for the interview with your permission, ma'am. Yes, please. Ma'am. Can I know the reason why our founder, Dr. B.S. Rao Garu, switched his career from successful doctor to educationalist? What we have to first understand is, is there are two founders for this. It's not just Dr. B.S. Rao, even my mother, Dr. Jansi Lakshmi, is a co-founder. So let me talk about both of them. Both of them are successful doctors uh, before they started Sri Chaitanya. But the background they came from, um, they did not come from a very well-off family. Especially for my mother, it must have been pretty hard because this was 55 years ago and women are not as encouraged as they are today. So they got through medical school and, uh, and then eventually they moved to uh, England and then to Iran to practice as doctors. And I was born there in Iran while my sister and brother uh, they were back in India because of uh, education. When they visited India to look for schools for uh, all of us, um, they did not find any school that's dedicated for um, girls. So that was their inspiration. They left everything behind, everything they worked for s until then, and they moved to India, and then they started the first uh, residential junior college for girls in 1986 with the strength of 86 students. Now, what we have to understand here is if somebody is given everything, if they have everything, it is easy to risk that and make a decision to change careers. But with my parents, whatever they uh, achieved by then, it was all on their own and they went through very hardship, a, very, a lot of hardships. And despite of that, they made uh, a bold uh, and brave uh, career choice and I'm glad it paid off. What was the greatest challenge when you took the administration from your dad? I went to Sri Chaitanya as well. I graduated from Sri Chaitanya. And then I went to the US, um, went to college there, and then moved back and started working here. But um, 
when I moved back, everybody who was working at Sri Chaitanya, all the management, the principals, the teachers, everybody, were the people who taught me when I went to school here. So coming back and working with them, while it is very, it's a very pleasant experience, they will, and they still treated me like a child. So I had to work doubly hard to prove myself and uh, to give them the confidence that I can, I fit into this role. So that was the main challenge I faced. And then luckily my parents are very supportive and they made sure that um, I fit in right away. Um, what is the best compliment you have ever received? I would say the best compliment is that my mom used to uh, tell me growing up that I should become a lawyer, <laughs> that I suit best for that role because I'm very logical and I argue very well uh, in an intellectual sense as well. So I think that's the best compliment I've ever received. Ma'am, could you please mention the strategies you follow towards work and life balance? Well, this is something I learned from my parents because they were not able to balance very well. Um, in the sense that they were constantly struggling to prove themselves because it's a new line of work, new environment for them since they moved back from uh, uh, Iran. And uh, then also they invested everything they had into work and they could not risk anything else. So their life constantly revolved around work. My mom and dad used to wake up at 4.30 in the morning and their day ended at 11.30 in the night. They did not have any friends or social life or any other um, interests that they took care of. But now I think looking back, they regret having done that. They now wish that they took some time out for themselves um, and the family. So I learned from that and uh, I make sure that I give uh, kids enough time. I have two uh, daughters, a seven-year-old and a five-year-old. So I make sure that uh, I give enough time for them and I make sure I take them around, take them out and spend time with them. So I think um, that's the best anybody can do. On a consultation platforms like Rhyme Rap is a vision map. How many of the focus towards your response? Um, so we were lucky to have introduced uh, the digital platform several years before it became a necessity due to uh, COVID. We started this about five years ago, and every year it was a learning, learning process for that. And we keep making changes based on the feedback, based on how the students are reacting. But I'm proud to say that this year will be the best year yet, because uh, we've made several changes to it, and we also uh, redesigned the curriculum to suit um, the current digital uh, necessities. And even going forward, I'm, I don't know if you heard of it, but we've... Uh, launched Infinity Learn. It's a new platform which will go hand in hand with Ranguru as well. And we've already hired about 100 senior most uh, tech team for uh, Infinity Learn. And I can guarantee you that going forward, it'll be a revo revolutionary product. Oh, so we are on the right track, ma'am. Specify your favorite stress buster, ma'am. I'm a very social person, so I meet my friends like once a week or once in two weeks. And also, I'm a very, um, I'm into pets, so I have two dogs. So my stress busters are mainly um, spending time with kids and then uh, having pets. And once in a while, I read as well. And I love meeting my friends. I have successfully completed my schooling in Shazanetic School. How competitive will I be in the future? I cannot answer that question about how competitive you will be in future, but what I can tell is that the main motto behind Sri Chaitanya Techno School is to prepare the child for anything going forward in future. Just like a parent does, what we believe is all we can do is equip you with everything, with whatever knowledge you need, with whatever skills you need, and while it is totally up to you as to how you will apply going forward in your life. But I can say that uh, you will be well equipped by the time you graduate from Sri Chaitanya. Ma'am, from your experience, have you found out any difference between 90s and 2K kids? There is a lot of difference, both positive and negative. Um, the positive is that they're very quick to learn and they, I feel that they're much smarter now 
much more intelligent than uh, what kids were uh, back when I was in school, uh, which is great. And they're also very competitive. But uh, on the flip side, what I do feel that is students back from the 90s are a lot more respectful towards the teachers and towards the uh, school. And they're a lot more appreciative also about what the teachers do for them. And hopefully, with all our programs that we do, awareness programs that we do in our campuses, we will be able to make sure that our students uh, respect the teachers the same way as the 90s kids did. I always get impressed with the interviews of Mr. Rajan Tata, Mr. Raghuram Rajan, and Ms. Kamala Harris. What are all the qualities of students who inculcate in the school ways to become a successful person in the future? Well, this all ties back to the previous questions, a couple of questions uh, we've been talking about. But however, um, I believe that successful people, each person is different. Success does not mean respect. So not every successful person is respected. So where, is, where, where will the respect come from? If that successful person is inspiring, that's when he or she will be remembered for a while. Otherwise, the success will be forgotten. The success will be of use to that person, but not to anybody else. The couple of examples you mentioned, let's talk about the Ms. Kamala Harris. She is the one of the first, I, if I remember right, first or second uh, woman of African heritage to be in that position and also first woman from Indian uh, heritage to be in that position. So what we have to think about here is that to be a woman itself in a very competitive environment is hard. And then she's coming from a minority in that region. And yet she stood for herself and she was very successful. We have to understand that it must have taken a lot of self-discipline, will and perseverance. That's one thing that those are the things we have to learn from her. And um, if we talk about Mr. Ratan Tata, um, he had a very disturbing childhood. He was not, he did not have a happy childhood. And he started working in the family business when he's uh, as young as 23 or 24. And even then, when we look around ourselves, people get in, into family businesses, they took off with a senior role. But this gentleman, he started working in his factory, in the father's factory, along with other blue collar workers during ma doing manual labor. So it's only about eight to 10 years later that he took up a senior management level position. Until then, he was working with blue collar workers. And in that process, he learned a lot, which in turn, he um, applied to the business going forward. And also, um, he is a philanthropist. Out of the company, he only owns 10%, sorry, not 10%, 1%. The rest of the company is owned by uh, majorly charitable trusts. So he's also a very kind uh, person and a giving back kind of person. Also, success uh, changes different people differently. It's very few people that remain the same or even change for the better. But most of the people, they get arrogant and they lose themselves in that process. Like, I'll give you an example. For example, in your class or in your school, they can be the most brightest student. The student is very bright, doing very well in school, um, and then uh, could be head boy or head girl of school. But if he or she is a bully, or if the attitude is bad, that student will be the most hated student in school. Do you agree or not? Let's apply the same thing to real life, to life in general. So even though you're successful, unless you're kind, unless you're not a bully, unless you help others, unless you guide others, then success means nothing and uh, it will not be remembered. So I think being kind is a way to develop both uh, professionally and personally. Now, apart from producing my and medical students, also you have enough technical facilitate students to become successful in all professions. Yes, definitely, because we here believe that un until now, um, either you have to join MPC or BIPC is a trend. And either a medical school or engineering school is a trend. And uh, other professions are not uh, very encouraged. 
but we believe that you can be successful in any field. So if we look around, people who are successful, they don't necessarily fit into either medical or engineering category. They are from several different backgrounds. And we are trying to cater to that here as well by uh, forming a base where you can do anything going forward and be successful. And as part of that, uh, we have a civils program, which does not focus on um, you know, either exclusively either on uh, biology or mathematics. There are other areas that we focus on, equipping students to uh, take any other exam out there, whether it be banking sector or any sector. And also in primary level, we've introduced Mavericks program uh, in order to equip the student with the same, the ability to be successful, not just subject knowledge. Ma'am, would you describe yourself as a risk taker? Can you please enumerate some of the risks, risks you have taken as a director on the results? I would say that I am both a risk taker and a safe player. So it depends on what we are talking about. Um, as far as the student's career is concerned, I'm not a risk taker. I want to make sure that we are doing the best we can for the student, knowing what we are doing, uh, because ultimately it's our responsibility to make sure that the student is successful and we cannot gamble with a student's life or career. Uh, but as far as work is concerned, yes, uh, not just me, Sri Chaitanya itself is known for risk taking. Otherwise, we wouldn't have expanded at this pace. And luckily, the risk has paid off and uh, we are the most successful when you look around. Is our Indian system of education still struggling to develop a curriculum for our kids to compete internationally? I think it depends on the way you look at it. Because uh, most, uh, a lot of CEOs for multinational companies are Indians. And a lot of them uh, had exposure to both Indian education system and uh, foreign education system. Indians are one of the most successful people in the world. It would not have happened if our education system is substandard. But however, I do agree that we have to um, find a balance between knowledge and implementation. If we make sure that whatever we've learned is implemented in a practical manner, we'll be all the more successful. Um, so hopefully that's the change um, we are, we w that will happen going forward. Ah, you're pretty successful developing India's number one school. Do you have any plan to open a college, you know, college university which is not so standard like Harvard, MIT and Oxford in India? So we definitely have that in mind. Uh, we were thinking about it actually a few years ago but that never happened because of the COVID situation. But uh, a few years down the line, we definitely want to go for a deemed university. And hopefully, uh, that dream will come true. Thank you, ma'am. Ma'am, how to handle sibling rivalry? Sibling rivalry, that's a good question, because my sister and I hated each other growing up. <laughs> we are uh, six years apart, so we always used to fight. And then uh, when she went away for college after her 12th grade is when we started getting together. We uh, became inseparable and that's when the relationship started building. And right now we're always there for each other and we are each other's priority. So what we have to remember is after parents, our siblings are the ones that will wish the best for us. While we may have good friends, while we may have well-wishers, it, it cannot beat uh, the blood relation. So as long as we remember that and as long as we question ourselves when there's an issue before questioning the other person, if you can question yourself, I think that'll take care of most of the issues. But overall, you have to remember that your parents and your siblings, siblings are your well-wishers and nobody else will match. Thank you, ma'am. Ma'am, can we have a quick rapid fire round? Sure, please do. Your hidden talent. I don't know. I don't think uh, I have any, but uh, I'm told that I'm uh, a quick thinker and I come up with solutions for a lot of problems. I don't know if that's a talent, but uh, I would like to think so. Which is better, a certificate or experience? I think certificate and experience should go hand in hand. If you have a certificate, you definitely have to put that to good use and gain experience. And also experience uh, with a certification background is better is what I think. Virtual schooling or physical schooling? 
um, I would say physical school with uh, virtual support. Uh, virtual uh, school can never beat physical school. Uh, physical school is always important because you directly get to interact with your uh, friends and teachers. And uh, you learn quicker with physical school also. But going forward, uh, since we all now have experience with virtual schooling, what I would uh, recommend is physical school with virtual school support uh, post regular school hours. Traditional way of learning, unconventional way of learning. Um, traditional way of learning with a conventional approach is what I would believe in. Reading or traveling? Um, I like both reading and traveling. Um, and I have read a lot before and now if I have to pick something, it has to be traveling because I believe that you learn a lot from travel experiences as well. Power or knowledge? So I believe knowledge is power as uh, the proverb says. So let's go with that. Unforgettable gift from your parents? So there's a lot of them that they've given me so far. Uh, there are a lot of gifts over years. Um, I used to be very good with uh, getting things done from them also. I'm a very spoiled child. Um, and I believe that whatever I am today is because of them. But if I have to pick one special thing, I can only think of uh, what my the first present my dad has given me. He went and picked it out on his own and he gave me that. It's a piece of jewelry. And as a girl, I'm uh, closer to my dad uh, than to my mom. So I would say that's the most special one. I have a lot of objects saved from my childhood, but um, the most special to me is my piggy bank because um, that uh, I used to save money and put it in my piggy bank. And even though I never spent it, I saved it. I still have it. All the old coins, old notes and everything. Um, and I would say that's my most special object. And one challenge that you had with your sister which is still cherishing in your mind. I told you earlier that we never got along growing up until um, she went away for college post 12th grade. And after that, our relationship totally changed and uh, we are inseparable. But growing up, um, since I was born in, in Iran and my sister was in India, I didn't see her for the first two years of my life. The first time I met her was uh, when I was two years old. She came to Iran for her summer vacation. And uh, I was told that I, a very, I was a very jealous child growing up. So I would not let her come close to my parents. I used to get jealous and I used to literally scratch her. And by the time she left Iran, she was all scratched up. And uh, she tells me this over and over again whenever she, can, uh, whenever she remembers it. So I would say that's one of the memories that uh, I can't forget and I wish I could change. Thank you for the interview amidst your busy schedule, ma'am. You have answered patiently and it gave us clear insight into the key areas. I sincerely thank our principal, principal ma'am and the teachers who have given me this wonderful opportunity. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, dear students, for the interview. I'm surprised at how confident you sounded and uh, taking this for attitude and going forward, I'm pretty sure you'll be very successful. Uh, good luck. And uh, again, thank you for the interview. Happy birthday, Dr. B. S. Rao. Happy birthday, Daddy. We, we love, love you. Putin does the work, Happy birthday, Maria. Happy, happy birthday, Daddy. Happy birthday, Daddy. Happy birthday, Daddy. Happy birthday, My dear, beloved chairman, Dr. B. S. Rao, sir, you are the legend in the education system. We wish you a many more happy rest of the day. I wish the benedictions of Almighty is always showered upon on the occasion of birthday of our beloved chairman, Dr. B. S. Rauder. On this special day, on behalf of Amir Pinto, wish you great health and a great life filled with prosperity and true happiness. Happy birthday, sir. Wish you a very happy, long, peaceful and healthy life ahead. Happy birthday again, sir. May this day bring countless happiness and endless joy with it. Peace and serenity. Happy birthday, sir. Thank you, sir. It's a special day for all of us. It's a wonderful birthday to you, sir. sir on behalf of my whole team from Kolkata Zone, we wish you a very, very, very happy birthday. Many more happy returns of the day, sir. May God bless you abundantly with the showers of blessing. Dr. B.S. Ravagaraki, a 
హృదయపూర్వక జన్మదిన శుభాకాంక్షలు విషయం ఆండ్రబుల్ చైర్మన్ డాక్టర్ బిఎస్ సార్ మెనీ మెనీ హ్యాపీ టుడే అండ్ వి ఆర్ ఆల్ బ్లెస్ టు బి ఏ పార్ట్ ఆఫ్ దిస్ ఫ్యామిలీ థ్యాంక్ యూ సార్ థ్యాంక్స్ ఫర్ యువర్ ఆపర్చునిటీ ఆఫ్ యూ సార్ Many more happy events of the day, Chairman Sir, from Nellur team. Wish you a happy birthday to our beloved Chairman Dr. B.S. Rogar. Debbie Mood Vasanthalu Poorthi Jeskoon Maa Dr. Garu, Noor Vasanthalu Poorthi Jeskoon Maa Dr. Garu, Noor Vasanthalu Poorthi Jeskoon Maa Dr. Garu, Noor Vasanthalu Poorthi Jeskoon Maa Dr. Garu, Wishing our beloved Chairman Sir a very happy birthday on behalf of staff, students and parents of Tamil Nadu Jones. I wish you a very happy birthday to you Sir. Honorable Chairman Sir. విద్యార్థి జీవితాలలో విద్యా వెలుగు నింపినటువంటి విద్యా ప్రదాత మా విజనరీ డైరెక్టర్ డాక్టర్ బిఎస్ రావు గారికి జన్మదిన శుభాకాంక్షలు హ్యాపీ బర్త్డే